Hello everyone and welcome! My name is Jerry and welcome to another one of my extremely detailed guides that I'd like to share with you all on Annie, the Dark Child. He's a little sinister demon baby with a giant butt buddy named Tibbers. Moving on, I'd like to mention that this guide is platinum approved, courtesy of Dude I'm Asian. He's Asian, so I'd trust him. Swoosh into the first mastery's page for the lovable pyromaniac. She'd be fit to be Bran's daughter. What a cute family. Okay, all right, now take a look at the only mastery's page I personally believe you need for Annie. This is my opinion again. There's not many variants for the mastery's tree. You always want archaic knowledge, though, and the rest should go into the utility tree as shown. Swoosh into the first rune page of this guide. We're going to start off with this one consisting of three greater quints of potency, four 15 ability power, nine marks of insight, four magic pen to make sure you're getting damage into the enemy's magic resist, nine seals of focus, four cooldowns, and nine glyphs of focus, four cooldowns. This is if you strictly farm minions and gain gold that way. But let's swoosh into my next page. That gives you a little more leeway in the lane. You've got the same three quints of potency, nine marks of insight for your reds, nine seals of clarity for mana regen, which will help you out while you're farming, so you can also poke back at the enemy in lane. With Annie, you want to utilize her low cooldowns in injuring the enemy, so they'll be forced to go back and let you push their tower, or you can end up killing them. When I was a little boy wearing a Teemo costume, I decided to jump off a bridge and swoosh into any gameplay. Starting off, I grabbed my W spell Incinerate and either Boots, three health potions, or a Doran's Ring to help out with sustained farm and harass. Now, a few important things before we start off with Annie. This guide may become outdated in the way Annie spells cost or how long the cooldowns are, but I feel her mechanics will still be the same, so let's begin. If you notice what I've been doing here, I'm using my W spell over and over. But why is this? Oh, don't worry, I'll tell you why. Well, Annie's passive Pyromania is after casting five spells, Annie will gain a passive stun. So I'm stacking my W spell five times before I leave the spawning pool because I get quick mono regen, and it deters the team from doing anything dumb until I get to them with my AoE stun. This is a perfect spell for jungle invasion and defense. Now we're moving into the laning phase. To keep a psychological pressure on your opponent in the middle lane, don't waste your stun. Sit back and just farm minions with your super long auto attack range. Remember, time your minions so that you can safely last hit from a close distance. When you feel like it, right before your level 2 comes up, use your stun on your opponent and throw off as many auto attacks as possible without taking too much minion aggro. You'll have your level 2 spell disintegrate, which is a gold farmer's best friend. The reason being that you gain 100% of the mana used in your Q spell back if you successfully last hit a minion. You'll have to be good at last hitting. The only bad thing about this is that you'll have to find a way between balancing your mana between harassing your opponent and using your spells offensively while farming as well. If you don't want to worry about that issue, then start with the Doran's Ring or put more mono regen runes into your rune page. Harass is important, but not if it's at the expense of tower hits. Most people know this. Try to harass from safety. You do not want to make an even playing field or give your opponent a confidence boost. After getting my second spell in Q, I grabbed it again, if you didn't notice, for my third skill in the sequence with the effect of maximizing cooldowns and damage on Annie's most useful farming tool. To keep track of your passive 5 spell stun, look here at the count so you can remember to equip your stun by using spells before any engagement. It's always smart to have it around 3 to 4 counts in case you get ganked as well. Now for your 4th skill in the sequence, grab your E spell, Molten Shield, which reduces damage taken by Annie, and similar to Thornmail, it hurts opponents who auto-attack her. This spell is very useful for getting your passive stun count back up to a safe level again if the situation gets messy. For your 5th skill in the sequence, grab whatever you want. I personally grab E because I anticipate high burst damage from a Kali. Get your Q spell if you're more sure of your lane dominance, so, and it all depends on what your lane is and who you're up against. Watch the other lanes. Since you're in the middle lane, it's your job to gank the side lanes. Take note, I do not leave and will never leave my lane unless it's pushed far enough so the enemy is too busy farming lane and protecting their tower and guessing that I either went back or I'm missing. So, do not disappoint me and stay in your lane all day without helping your teammate by ganking. Ooh, these enemies look delicious. Also, note my positioning. If I went in where Cho'Goth was, they would have seen me with that ward and it would have been a failed gank. I go undetected in this side brush, though. I go in with my stun already up and use my Q to get a sure stun, then W and my ignite finishing off Lee Sin under his tower. 
I'm running away now because tower hits are not my friend. Cho'Goth and I are running for our lives, but I keep my cool and keep using my spells on Amumu while doing my best at staying away from his pathetic crying. Luckily, he veers off chasing Cho'Goth, and I stun him now with Bane auto-attacking. I keep my cool, but... Oh, hey, Earth! Amumu starts coming at me, but Earth helps me out! I flash over the wall, dropping to 11 HP, and get away from there with the red buff and two kills. Perfectly legit strategy here. Teemo gets Rumble low enough to where I'm interested, and I intercept him in the bush with Tibbers, and BOOM! Down he goes, and immediately, I tell Teemo I'm sorry, even though I'm not. There are those moments, as Annie, where you want to get a guaranteed kill. So, you blow all of your spells stupidly just to feel good about your one successful overkill! <sighs> la 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 la! Ooh, hi Amy! Stun me, please! Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I got you now, bitch. Ignite! What the fu- I'm calm now. I'd like to show you all a useful function to reserve in engagements. I blow most of my cooldowns on Zillion, but retreat as soon as I see Nidali. Knowing Jungle Bunny Spear tactics, I control Tibbers using the Alt button on my keyboard and begin annoying her by placing Tibbers in front of her spears, creating a much needed shield. This may be harder to do in the heat of 5v5 teamfights, but in quick skirmishes, it can prove very useful. I know blowing all my cooldowns is not a good- Ah, screw it. Simultaneous dual flashes OP! Now it's just a competition of who tried the hardest. Me! Yes, I'm such a tryhard. On a lighter note, positioning yourself in teamfights is extremely important. I notice the enemy team is far away from the tower like ourselves, and to avoid a counter flank, I initiate the flank myself and scout as soon as I see the enemies coming into vision near the Wraith camp. I see Ashen instantly blow all of my cooldowns on her, being exhausted. She ults me, but I have time to flash away, and now my team goes in. Knowing their AD carry is scared, I retreat back to avoid any quick focus, while Sona ults, and now the enemy team is caught with their pants down, and we decide that the rapage must commence. Because of my flanking move as Annie, we win this team fight 5v5, killing three and losing nobody. Now, for those who know that Annie's auto attacks are OP already, I'm going to show you just why. I pinged Caitlyn, and Ash knows I'm ready to fight. I know they're going to stay near each other, so I make sure to have Tibbers up with an AoE stun. This is important. Let's take that in slow-mo. I focus a Q on Caitlyn first, and my stun counter is at 4, now moving on to 5, my stun. I make sure to drop Tibbers in between Caitlyn and Sona to get the AoE stun effect and begin only focusing Caitlyn, as she's closer to the tower and myself, while Sona is closer to Ash and Alistar. I begin auto-attacking Caitlyn, who has been ignited. She pops a health potion, but attack damage Annie is just too strong. I get enough mana to Q Sona, and Alistar headbutts her, then auto-attacks her, and my magical super long-range missile takes the kill. Hey everyone, we're moving into the item builds for Annie now. If you haven't thumbs up yet, I recommend you should. Thank you very much. There's not many variants for Annie when it comes to builds, but I was able to scratch up these three. The first build is the one I use most often. I start out with the boots because your priority is to farm, do damage, and to not get hit. The enemy in the lane may get boots, but you can have the upper hand if they don't. I like it because sometimes you can get a really high burst champion who has a really strong early game to go against, so it's easier to avoid him with the boots. Three health potions is a great thing to have. Try to avoid enemy spells and mini nagros so your health pots last until you have enough money to go back and buy your next items. If you look throughout these recommended builds, I always rush into a Rod of Ages because having that early catalyst will make it harder to be ganked and that extra mana is great for added harassing to your enemy. Rod of Ages makes you overall tanky since it stacks based on time gone by, this is why you should rush a Rod of Ages first. A Rabadon's Death Cap is another item I very strongly recommend getting on Annie because she needs the burst nuke damage to insta-kill her opponent. Build 1 has the most AP and I grab Magic Pen with the Void Staff and reduced AoE MR of enemies with the Abyssal Scepter. A Rabadon's Death Cap is another item I very strongly recommend getting on Annie because she needs the burst nuke damage to insta-kill her opponents. Build 1 has the most AP and I grab Magic Pen with the Void Staff and reduced AoE MR of enemies with the Abyssal Scepter. Build 2 is a great build, but it focuses on magic resist and armor. An all-around defensive build, but you still have that high burst damage. It's just harder to kill you. This is a build I recommend for those of you who are prone to taking damage in engagements. The third build is the tankiest build of 3 because you're rushing tanky items first. I don't like not getting the Rabadon's death cap as soon as possible, but sometimes you just have to wait it out and play defensive if the enemy team is really aggressive and just farm it off. All of the footage of this guide was taken from ranked games played with Annie, and builds and strategies were created through the aid of the official MLG TBM team and put together by yours truly. Share this guide with your buddies who need a helping hand, and don't forget to subscribe. 
Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. My name is Jerry. Everybody, three, two, one, swash! Make sure you remember to subscribe. You see that big yellow button down there? If you click it, you'll be updated constantly with our videos. So make sure you, make sure you, make sure you, Remember to click that yellow button down there and subscribe.